Do you know what prevents your computer from blowing up during lightning storms? Tiny little gadget called the surge protection device. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will understand surge protection devices, commonly known as SPDs. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of what an SPD is and how it protects your equipment and its characteristics and the different types of SPDs that exist in the market. But why should you listen to me about SPDs? At Axis, we have been manufacturing lightning protection systems, including SPDs for the last 30 years. You will find our protection used in substations, data centers, and thousands of residential and commercial projects across the globe. So let's get into it. First, let's start by understanding the need for these devices. These devices play a crucial role in your building's internal lightning protection. They safeguard your equipment by limiting electrical surges, making them the most common choice for surge protection. Electrical devices can malfunction or get damaged if a surge voltage goes beyond their impulse voltage rating. Surge voltages, often reaching high kilovolts, are transient. This means they occur in very small time but with high energy which can damage your equipment. These are caused by lightning strikes, switching operations and electrostatic discharges. Since these surges last from a few microseconds to several hundred microseconds, their short duration and high amplitude can cause sudden voltage spikes. SPDs are designed to protect against these spikes. So how do these SPDs protect against over voltage. SPDs are connected in parallel to the equipment and work on the principle of equipotentialization. The key to understanding this is knowing that the potential difference is the factor that damages equipment. When a surge enters a system through any line, be it phase, neutral or earth, it increases the potential difference between these lines. What SPDs do at this moment is they balance the surge voltage across all the lines. They bring the potential difference back to a normal value, keeping your equipment safe. To understand SPDs better, let's understand lightning protection zones in a little more detail. The central idea is to limit current and voltage surges induced by lightning or otherwise from damaging a structure or its contents by dividing the structure into risk zones. These lightning protection zones are nested within each other with the most sensitive zones being in the innermost. By using lightning protection systems such as lightning arresters and SPDs, the effects of lightning hitting the outer zone are reduced before they can affect the people or sensitive equipment in the inner zones. Surge protection devices are used in area where a transition takes place between two different lightning protection zones as shown in this flowchart. For example, a type 1 or a type 2 SPD would be used at the main power distribution switchboard where the electrical system enters the structure. For more information on lightning protection zones, please read our blog on the topic. The link is in the description. Now, let's take a deeper look at the different types of SPDs mentioned earlier. IS IEC 62305 Part 4 classifies SPDs into three categories. Let's understand each one of them in detail. Type 1, also known as Class B SPDs, are recommended in the LPZ1 area. You should install them in the main panels of industries where the most lightning surges are expected. Type 1 SPDs can handle high energy levels. They're made with spark gap materials, which is two pieces of metal insulated by a gap filled with gas or air. This material helps in managing intense surges. Type 2 SPDs, also known as Class C SPDs, are recommended in LPZ2 areas. Their main function is to handle switching surges. These SPDs are made from MOV, a metal oxide resistor. In simple words, it's an electrical component whose resistance varies with the voltage. Type 2 SPDs respond faster than Type 1, but they have a lower energy handling capacity. Therefore, we recommend installing Type 2 SPDs in distribution panels that follow the main panel where the Type 1 SPD is installed. Type 3 SPDs, also known as Class D SPDs, are recommended in LPZ3 areas. These SPDs have a low energy handling capacity and are installed at the end points of the electrical system, such as your socket, so that they can respond quickly during a surge. Materials like diodes are used in the construction of these SPDs, allowing them to manage surges safely. Type 1 plus 2 SPDs, also known as Class B plus C SPDs, are installed in panels where cables enter from outside a building. They have a similar function as Type 1 SPDs 
and are also installed in the same location. Made using a combination of metal oxide resistors (MOVs) and spark gaps, they are more economical as compared to Type 1 SPDs. I hope you now have a clear idea about SPDs and their different types. At Axis, we have a team of 40 plus engineers to help you design and install your SPDs and your lightning protection system. We'd love to know if you have ever installed an SPD or worked with an SPD and what your opinion are on these equipment. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos about lighting protection, grounding systems and other topics on electrical engineering.